Thank you, Sean. And thank you for gathering for worship virtually and in person. At Wesley United Methodist Church, I'm Pastor Scott Grokey. Serving with me is Pastor Melly Momo. Good morning, Pastor Melly. Please complete a connection card. You can turn it in when the ushers come by for your offering, or you can think about, ponder some of the questions that are asked here and turn it in as you exit this morning. Prayer time is tomorrow. Stop in between 4 and 6 p.m. and spend a few minutes in prayer for yourself. There's a lengthy list of concerns in the bulletin this morning and for others. Let us continue then in a time of worship. Will you stand? So I have to ask you a few things. Hi. Hi, Lincoln. Hi, Hi. Glad you're here. I wanted to ask you a few questions. If you were in a race at school and you won this blue ribbon, how would you feel? Happy? That'd make you pretty excited, wouldn't it? Tell me if you uh, entered a baking contest and you got this trophy, how would you feel? Very happy. It'd be exciting to get a trophy like this, wouldn't it? So tell me, if you were at school and there was a coloring contest and you won this trophy, how would that make you feel? 
Yeah, you feel pretty cool if you want a trophy like this. Oh, you do? But do we get trophies for every? Oh, okay. Do you get trophies for everything that you do well? If your mom or dad asked you to clean your room, when you get done, does she say, here, here's this trophy for you? No. What if you were at Walmart and there was a person and she dropped a bunch of things and you helped her pick it up? Do you think she would pull this out of her purse and give you this trophy? Well, why, why do we do these things then if we're not going to get a trophy? We do these things because we want to help others. We want to serve others. And in our homes, it starts with wanting to do what our parents want us to do. And we, we can help our families by doing what they ask us to do, but I'm sure there's lots of things that you do in your house to help that you're not even asked to do. And that makes you feel pretty good, doesn't it? You don't need a trophy. Well, God asks us to help other people too. Because we serve God, we help God, when we are helping other people. So we always need to look for ways that we can help. Because that makes us feel good, and that makes God feel very good. So let's say a prayer. Dear God, please help us to be helpful. Please help us find ways to serve others and to do it without reward, because we know that it is pleasing to you. Amen. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, kids. Good morning. God is good all the time. Wait, I have two prayer requests here, and you have many prayer requests in the bulletin. Uh, one is to lift up the family of Isla guests. That's uh, Monica Everson's mom who passed away, so lift their family. Now prayers, and also we pray for Nidra Amerin. I wanted to say America. I mean, we are always in the hospital with COVID, so lift them in our prayers. Let us go to the throne of God in prayer. Father of glory, Lord of lords, King of kings, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, Father, we give you praise this morning that you have allowed us to come together to worship you, to lift your name high, Lord. I thank you for the gift of life. I thank you for the many blessings that you have given us. I thank you for family and friends, for this church that you have given us as a place of worship place to love one another, place to stand together to do your work, your will. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will move upon each one of us gathered here and those online, the radio. Lord, I ask that your Spirit who move and minister to us according to the needs in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the healing, for those who are celebrating healing this morning, and asking as well for those who are not feeling well, that you touch them, that you touch them, Lord, as Isaiah said, by your wounds, we are healed. So I pray for that blood shed on Calvary tree to run into the bodies, of your children, your people, so that they will feel well, not only physically, also emotionally, spiritually. I pray for your healing. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your, lo for your love for us. Thank you, Lord, for the forgiveness that you have provided to us. 
Thank you for your words that you have made available to encourage us in our walk with you. Now, Lord, I ask that you be with those who have lost loved ones as we remember the family of Phila and many others. We ask for your comfort, Lord, comfort them. We also pray for those who are traveling. We pray for travel mercies. Lord, we pray for peace, for peace for our country, for peace for the nations, the world. Be with our leaders, Lord, inspire them with your wisdom so that they will be able to do your will. Lord, rebuking all powers of darkness against us, on us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and asking that you reign and rule. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your love and mercy. Thank you, Lord, for the many blessings. One more time, Lord, I ask that you help us be the church you have called to be. Be the church of Jesus Christ. Loving one another and encouraging one another and reaching out to those who don't know you so that they will be able to know you. And I pray that you send on our ways others so that they will be able to worship and learn and experience your love in this church. So now, Lord, I also want to lift what we are about to give. I pray that you bless the gifts that we are about to give at this moment, that you multiply it for your work, and that you bless the source of provenance. For those who are not able to give today, to support your work today, that you provide that they will be able to do so. Now hear our prayers as we say together the way your son Jesus Christ continue to teach us. Our Father who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, in the power, in the glory forever. Amen. As the ashes come forward.
Our Old Testament reading is coming from us, from Micah 6, verse 6 to 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with cows a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body? for the sin of my soul. He has told you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. I invite you to turn with me to the Gospel of Mark chapter 10, beginning in verse 35. Please stand with me. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you're asking, are you able to drink the, the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? They replied, we are able. And Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine to grant, for it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among you, among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. As the ancient word was breathed upon by the Holy Spirit of God, so may the living word Jesus Christ step from its pages the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Lord, speak to us now to interpret for us your word by the presence and power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. A long line of limousines was weaving its way through traffic toward the cemetery. When the hearse arrived at the gate, a policeman stopped it from entering because a long line of children was being led by their parents. After several minutes waiting time, the executive climbed out of his limousine to ask about the delay. The officer explained that These children had walked all the way from their grade school to pay respects to Miss Irma Smith, who had died of a heart attack at the age of 72. She had been their crossing guard for 22 years at the corner of Oak and Fifth Streets. 
Still frustrated, the young executive climbed back into his limousine. He and his anxious friends would simply have to wait for admittance. So would the hearse that carried the company president. What will it take to learn that greatness is not determined by the power we think we have? God is calling you and Wesley United Methodist Church to greatness. We'll arrive when we understand that being great is not by your power, but in serving others. The Serendipity Bible gives this title to today's gospel reading. Your attitude determines your altitude. Let's hear it again. Your attitude determines your altitude. One day, James and John were trying to gain altitude. They came to Jesus as though he was some type of short order cook and they said teacher we want you to do for us whatever we ask the question was wrong from the start listen to it again we want you to do whatever we ask it really sounds like the question of preschoolers not adults Jesus was gracious And said, what can I do for you? They said, allow us to sit, one at your right and one at your left in your kingdom. It sounds like an innocent request. But it's a power play. A striving to get to the top. C.S. Lewis in his Mere Christianity says this about our gospel reading today he says pride is in competition with everyone else's pride it's because I wanted to be the big noise at the party that I'm annoyed that someone else is being the big noise you might remember that early on in the stories of the gospel Jesus gave nicknames to James and John he called them sons of thunder Isn't that what's really happening here in the story? They're just making big, loud noises, thunderous noises. Is it any wonder that the other disciples were indignant? All 12 needed to hear what Jesus had to say. So do we. Our cultural assumption is that greatness is measured by power, wealth, prestige, ambition. We're wrong. So Jesus turns the pyramid over on us to say that greatness is not measured by how many people serve you, but by how many you serve. Those who want to be great will be servants to others. I recall reading about Alexander the Great, the fourth century king of Macedonia. One day he found the philosopher Diogenes sifting through a huge pile of human bones. They asked him what he was doing. Well, Diogenes saw this as a moment to teach the king something about service. Diogenes said, I'm looking for the bones of your father, but I cannot distinguish them from the bones of his servants. Serving others is the way Jesus defines greatness. I've mentioned it before. In my late teen years, I worked as a church custodian and also for a couple years in high-rise maintenance. For a while, I started thinking, I can work my way up in the corporation here. 
when I was called to ministry, I, I started in, in very tiny little churches. Even pastors think about career, movement. At some point, I needed to hear Jesus. If I hear him, if I understand him correctly, I've actually worked my way down in the corporation. Right? Real power is found in those who serve. So we need to turn that pyramid over. Jesus said, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. The custodian, the secretary, the housekeeper, these are the real movers and shakers. How would you function if no one was there to unlock your doors or hang up your power lines, pick up your trash cans? How would you operate if no one was available to service your car or troubleshoot your computer? How would you carry on if no one performed those simple, common tasks? Those who serve you in the simplest, lowliest jobs are pivotal to the universe. Jesus says they are the great ones in the kingdom. What if the CEOs of national corporations never figure this out? In his Cups of Light, Clarence Cranford reminds us that the surgeon needs the nurse the artist needs the supplier of canvas. Jesus said, whoever wants to be first must learn to serve. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. So if he came to serve, what are you going to do with your life? Jim Anderson was one of those lonely Maytag repairmen. Remember the commercials? On a chilly October morning, Jim took a day off, went fishing in Lake Michigan Harbor at Kenosha, Wisconsin. As he was casting his line, he watched as a small boy fell from a concrete ledge into the water. The depth was about 20 feet. The boy kept going under. His babysitter wasn't paying attention. Jim dove in, fully clothed, pulled the boy up to the ledge. Witnesses said that without Anderson taking the risk, the six-year-old would have never seen his seventh birthday. You see, the lonely Maytag repairman became a servant because he thought of someone else. And even if he hadn't been my brother-in-law, I'd still say that what he did is great. Makes him great. Whoever wants to be first must learn to serve. I don't know about you, but I'm being inundated with political ads from the Democrats and the Republicans and in between. Both sides of the aisle fail us at some point. And on occasion, both succeed in understanding service is what is important. John F. Kennedy, the Democrat, in his inaugural address, 1961, said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Eighty years before that, Oliver Wendell Holmes, Jr. offered a Memorial Day speech. You might want to know that Holmes suffered gunshot wounds three times in three different battles of the Civil War. Later, he was appointed to the Supreme Court by Republican President Theodore Roosevelt. At the memorial address, Holmes honored those who served. 
And this is what he said. It is now the moment to recall what our country has done for each of us and to ask ourselves what we can do for our country in return. At some point, Holmes and Kennedy were both hearing Jesus who said, those who want to be great will be servants. One day Jesus gave his disciples a lesson on humility and service. It was time for James and John to come down. It's always time for the high and mighty to come down. Jesus told them, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Harry Emerson Fosdick learned about it 100 years ago. He was a very popular American pastor serving at New York's Riverside Church one Sunday worship. He was greeting people. Maybe I've told this story before. It's worth hearing again. He was standing at the door at the end of worship greeting people, and he shook hands with a four-year-old girl saying, you go home and tell your daddy, you shook hands with Dr. Harry Emerson Fosdick. And she said, you go home and tell your mommy you shook hands with Susie Smith. (laughs) Jesus does not care about your power, your politics, or your prestige. He said, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant. Greatness is found in serving. We who call ourselves disciples should be the first to learn it. Servant leadership. It begins here, now. Reverend John Wesley told the story of Oliver Cromwell, who was a lawmaker and soldier in 17th century England. Cromwell was visiting one of the cathedrals of London. In a stern voice, he asked, What are these? The dean of the chapel said, Please, your highness, these are the twelve apostles, silver statues. Cromwell said, The twelve apostles are they? Well, take them away and melt them down and coin them into money that, like their master, they may go about doing some good. That was what James and John needed. It might be what you need. It might be what I need. A little melting down so we can go about doing some good. A little reshaping. A little bringing down an altitude so we can become servants, so Jesus can use us. And so we pray. Have your own way, Lord, have your own way. You are the potter, we are the clay. Mold us and make us after your will. While we are waiting, yielded and still.
We offer this benediction. God will remember attitude will make the proper altitude. May the Holy Spirit shape us, mold us, form us to his will. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated.